All right, good morning. And welcome to lecture three of our principle of taxation. So I want us to look at gift tax. Uh, per the syllabus, it carries five marks. And it's a very, very simple uh, tax principle we want to look at or a tax regime we want to look at. So first of all, let's define what a gift is. So when we talk about a gift, you are talking about a receipt, anything that you receive. But that receipt or what you have received is without consideration or, or what we call inadequate consideration. So anything that you receive that uh, you don't pay anything back uh, is a gift, all right? That is a gift. Now let's look at how the Ghana tax law uh, sees these gifts and how uh, it is taxed under the tax law. Now, we have uh, the tax law giving us the definition, a gift tax under the income tax as 2015 at 896. Uh, it's, it, it, according to the law, it says that when a person receives a gift, what do we mean by that? This is the gift. And that gift will be received in respect of employment, business, or investment. You see, these are the three main sources of accessible income in Ghana. So it's either you receive the gift because you are employed. So the, the gift was received uh, because of the employment that you have. So for example, uh, if your boss gives you something uh, without you paying anything back or rendering any service in return, which is a gift, then in this case, this gift is a gift under employment income. Because if you are stayed in your home and he doesn't know you anywhere, he won't give you any uh, gift. So that is what we are trying to say. And if that gift is also given uh, because of a business relation, then that is if it's also given because of an investment relation, that is it. So you go to a bank, you normally uh, do an investment package and you went there one day and they said that, oh, okay, uh, let, me, let us give you something to appreciate your funds that you have been putting in the bank. It is related to your investment okay so that is what we mean all right and sometimes to you be in your office people will bring you some hamper as a business all right so if you have a business because of that business relation you are receiving a gift and so that one also becomes something that is taxable under the law but the law makes a caveat so all these gifts that you receive in respect of employment business or investment other than those under a will or interstate. So if somebody dies without making a will, if you receive this, so uh, basically these things are dealt with under realization, realization without consideration. So these, these things are dealt with. When we get there, we will talk more into that. Or by transfer uh, to spouse, child, parent of that person. So this, this is like a family transfer. So because I give something to my wife, it's not, it will not be termed as a gift. Give something to my child, it should not be termed as a gift. I give something to my parents, it should not be termed as a gift that is taxable. All right. So that is what we are trying to say. Uh, apart from that, any other gift that you receive is, is taxable under the law. So uh, these are things that you have to be mindful of. All right. Okay. Then we, we so, so you see clearly that uh, the gifts are tied in these three areas employment, business, and investment, all right? These are where the gifts are tied to. Now, so therefore, we categorize the gifts under these things. So when you read section four, which talks about uh, income from employment, uh, section four, subsection two, uh, VII, talks about a uh, gift that is received from employment. It says that those are the gifts a person may receive because of his connection of his employment. And such gifts may arise, it says that out of one's employment relationship, donated by the employer, an associate of the employer, or a third party under an arrangement with the employer. So like I said, uh, sometimes you'll be there, finance person, uh, the bank will now bring you some gifts. All because of, if the bank is a third party, they are associated to the employer, which is the company. And so when they give you the individual gifts, these are all what we are talking about. Then we talk about gifts from business. So that one too comes uh, because of your ties. 
uh, uh, in a business, all right? Then gifts from investment, like I've already explained, all right? Then shortly, let's talk about the value of the gift. The value of the gift, therefore, is the market value, all right? What is the market value? The value at which one will exchange something for a consideration or transfer a liability uh, between two knowledgeable market participants at a market uh, market date or a measurement date. So, so what we are what we are talking about is that how much. So if the person give you, so for example, this is my phone. Uh, if I dash this phone to uh, somebody because uh, in relation to employment, not necessarily my family member. I mean those ones that uh, the law exempts us from. So if I now give this phone, uh, probably let's say the the price of the phone is. Uh, uh, three thousand. That is how much I bought it, and I give I give the phone to uh, somebody else. What in the hands of the person who is supposed to pay the gift tax? What is going to happen is that at the time that he received it, you see, because uh, the time that I I bought the phone is different from the time I am giving the phone. If the the time I give the phone to the person is the same day I bought it, then the value is easy to be uh, to be determined because there is a receipt. If it, it takes a while and I give the gift, then it means that we ask ourselves, at that time that the gift is given, how much would anybody buy that phone? All right, so that becomes the value uh, with which uh, the tax will be calculated. On. Now, so what then, how then do we tax it? And don't forget, it is categorized under employment, business, and investment, okay? So uh, those that, that are tied uh, under the employment, those that are tied on the business, uh, you will add it to the income of the person. So you add it to the income of the person, uh, business income or employment income, then you apply the graduated tax rate, all right? When we say the graduated tax rate, if we are talking about the, the employment uh, income graduated tax rate, uh, this is an individual, if the gift is received, it's individual who receive gifts. Companies are separate entities. They can't receive gifts. In fact, company is not a physical being. All right, you 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 can't uh, call a company. So when it comes to gifts, uh, more attention is on the individual, not a taxable person, uh, uh, like an entity. We are talking about the individual status in a taxable person. All right. So that is what we are talking about, and so. It falls under the PIT, personal income tax. So if I received it because of my employment connections, if I receive it because of my uh, business connections, uh, what will happen is that I will add it to my accessible income, either the, the, the one under the employment or the one under my business, all right? So that is what will happen. But if the gift is received in, in respect of investment, so we say that where the individual received gift, uh, uh, in respect, at a gift other than the one that he, re he received in respect of business or employment. I mean, what we are trying to say is that a gift in respect of investment. The key term is that he may, that is the, that is the key. He may elect to tax that gift at 15% if he's a resident Ghanaian and at 25%. If he, so the question of this may gives options. It's not a shall, it's a may. So you can decide to tax the gift. So in case of my phone that was given, let's say the value was 3,000, you just have to apply 15%, all right? And you calculate it, let's see, 15%, uh, 0.15, then we do 3,000. That one gives me 450. So this 450 has to go to GRA, all right? So that is what we are talking about. What is the other option under the May? Okay, so if it's not a shah and it is a male, a May, uh, then I, I, I suggest that you can also decide uh, to to add it to your uh, uh, your other your treat it as a, a line in the, your personal income tax. Uh, I don't want to say you add it to employment because it's not from employment. Neither do I want to say you, you add it to your business because it's coming from your business. But there is also an investment column in the PIT uh, uh, tax. Uh, uh, so you can also decide to add it as your and apply the graduated tax rate because it is a May. All right. So that is that is that.
Okay, the next thing we want to look at is uh, uh, the return, the return, the return. All right, so uh, how do you file it and how do you make the payment? All right, the law says that when a gift is received by an individual and that gift is not in respect of a business or employment, uh, that is what we are saying is that the, the investment, the law says that the taxable person shall within 21 days of receiving the gift, submit to GRA uh, in writing a return containing the following information. So this is it. You give us the description of uh, the description and the location of the taxable gift. And you also talk about the total value of the gift, then how it is calculated in the tax payable in respect of the gift, the full name, an address of the donor and any other information as required by the GRA. We'll look at those ones. Uh, I have a practical example to show you. Uh, then it says that the person shall remit to GRA an amount of tax calculated as payable uh, uh, and the payment is due at the time the return is submitted. So you have 21 days, uh, within 21 days. So it can't exceed 21 days. Gift tax must be paid uh, within 21 days. All right, so that is that. You know, in our old law, when we were doing the uh, Re uh, IRS Act 592, uh, there was two types of gifts. The one, I remember, there was one under Section 8 and there was one under Section 105. And so uh, there was a caveat. I mean, whether how much the gift you receive, you have to less exempt amount, which was then was like 500 CDs. Uh, so if I remember correctly, those days, if the gift is 3000, there was an exempt amount, all right, of like 500 CDs. So you less it and get 2,500 before you apply the 15%. Okay, so uh, this law didn't, this our current law uh, didn't give any of such, it's not found neither in the LI, neither in the Income Tax Act 896, neither in the uh, Revenue Administrative Act. So here, these are the treatments that the law requires us to take. So if it is a business and employment, you add it to your business income or your employment income, and you use the graduated tax rate. If it is from investment, you elect to apply 15% if it is a resident person. But if it's not a resident person who received the gift, you are supposed to pay 25%, all right? Okay, so let, let me show you here. I added it to your, so this is a 25% for a non-resident person. All right, so this, this is it, this is it. Uh, so now uh, let me just show you the, uh, the form for the return. And I think it has not been updated since those days. So it still has the exempt value still has the exempt value, all right? So, uh, and and I think that if it was sticking to the old law, the exempt value should have been automated so that uh, it's there, you can't touch it, all right? So this is the return form. So you see, this thing is still having LTO, MTO, and we've gone past this. These days, there is nothing like STO. They are all uh, TSCs, tax service centers. So it, it hasn't been updated yet. So the TSC you belong. If I'm in Nungwa, you just type Nungwa. All right. So uh, that, is, that is how it functions. Then uh, the, the period. So the period that you receive the gift, okay, so if it is April, so you just do April 2023. That's that's what you do. All right, then the particulars uh, of the recipient of the gift. So uh, here, in, if I'm the one that received the gift, I'll put in my particulars. So I'll put in my name. All right, then the tin number, or oh, sorry, the tin, put in the tin. It says that the new tin and the old tin. These days, there's nothing like new tin, old tin. It's your Ghana card uh, number or ECOWAS identification card now. Your occupation, you put the relationship with the donor, postal address, telephone number. 
All right, then you have the particulars who gave it to you, uh, the person's thing. All right, so this this is it. So you, uh, the postal address, the residential address, and the telephone, all of the donor. Then at this place is where you receive the gift that, the gift that you receive. What was it? Uh, date you received the gift. All right, then a brief description and where you received the gift. Then the value of the gift. So you add them all up over here. So it is this value that uh, you will put in here. What you have here is this that is good. Then I think in those days you will let your exams uh, amount and you apply the rate. The rate herein, uh, this is specifically for investment, all right? Investment gift, gift receiving. Then you apply, if it is a resident person, you put in 15%. If it is a non-resident person, you, you, the person who received the gift is what we are talking about. If you are a Ghanaian resident, uh, then you put in 15. If you are a, a non-resident, then you put, you are in Ghana, but you are a non-resident and you receive the gift, you put in what, 25%. Uh, then you declare. So I declare, I hereby declare that the particulars given in this return are true and correct. All right, so I think in these days, the, there is a caveat that to the best of my knowledge, it has to be there, all right? Because this, this is dangerous, all right? Then you sign, you put in the date, all right? So uh, I think, like I said, this one still stuck to uh, section 105 and section 106 of the old law, but these days we are using the income tax uh, uh, 896. So you, you just, that is the bit I want to show you. All right. So that is it for gift tax. It's very, very easy. Uh, you just have to, when they give you a case, a small case where you have to deal with this in the form of, uh, uh, what do you call it? An essay question or whatever it is. Just be able to fish out and apply uh, the law that we spoke about. Yeah, you will be fine. All right. So that is that. All right. Thank you. Let's meet again next time on Withholding Tasks.